Now time for question. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Dr. Wong. That was, I'm gonna stop your screen share now, bring you back to full screen, perfect, gotcha. Um, someone in the chat is saying, dear Dr. Wong, thanks for a lot of leading us to face all the sufferings and embrace the dark side and achieve the real life value and be the light. A small candle also can light hundreds of candles. And um, your, your talk was so rich and such a good example of being the light. And if you have any questions, um, put them in the Q&A or the chat, but I do have a question, so we'll start with this one. How can we inoculate ourselves against those who inflict suffering on others in the name of a good cause? You mentioned that at the beginning, um, that, that people do that. How can we protect ourselves against that good cause? Okay. Yeah. yeah this is, this is a... a, a a loaded question, but an important question. So I always say, everything is a good side and bad side, okay? So transcendence, there are two sides. The good side, the bad side. The good side is to sacrifice ourselves to serve others, okay, because the good side. The bad side is to use this idea of Sacrifice for good call to make other people suffer. See, to make other people suffer. Say, I do this to you for for the ideal. I do that to you. I make you suffer. I inflict pain on you because we are we are promoting a cause. So that's why in under Nazi Germany, there's a book called the the, the ordinary people. Ordinary people. Ordinary people can become psychopath by following order. The, the, the obedient experiment. Ordinary people will shock other people because the experimenter told them so. So that's why we have to be very careful about ideology. You know, ideology, you know, name ideology to inflict pain on other people. That's why love is the answer. Love, okay? If anything against the principle of love, that's not a true something. Eh? Self transcendence is based on compassion and love for people. Okay? Another question. So, do we protect ourselves against ideology by yes, living right. that paradox? So, see, love your neighbor as yourself. That mm -hmm. has self compassion and self love, the, self, the good kind. The good kind of self-love means take care of your health, take care of your, take, take care of your mind, protect your body, protect yourself against, against common, against like millions, against psychopaths, against narcissists, what against the dark forces, right? Right, beautiful, thank you. Uh, we do have one more question. A uh, couple more questions here. Hi, Dr. Wong. Thanks for sharing some of your concepts with us. Just a question. How can I introduce the concept of self-transcendence to some of my atheist friends? Can I frame it as a sort of tragic heroism that allows us to become more virtuous, empathetic, and generally better people? Good. Good. So that's a question I, I, I was asked wherever, you know, all over the world, wherever I go, okay? Can can. That's why Franco is very careful. He doesn't use the word God. He used the word super meaning, okay? Or super master, okay? Oh, no. So, uh, or your higher power, or, or God without a capital, okay? God means highest ideal. He said, God, the highest ideal. Wherever you your highest ideal, he always say, it's to, to uh, now, this is what I say to Aces, okay? You should act as if there's a God, as if there's a high authority to which you are accountable. So because people suffer, because they pray God. This you say that if you know God, if God is dead, that's nihilism. If God is dead, then everything is everything permissible, everything is possible. So Nietzsche told, told us the danger of saying no God. So you know God, 
You didn't know God. You created a God. Say, so, oh, don't do it. God, I watching you. So, so there's no no man around in, in darkness. You're tempted to do bad things. You're you're you're, you're alcoholic. You're tempted to drink. You are uh, you are recovered alcoholic. Now you're tempted to drink again. Oh, nobody watching. Then remember, then he God watching you. <laughs> the somebody watching you. So you act as if you're God. That will teach you the wisdom of not to listen to the voice of the devil, the voice of temptation. Okay? Also, believe in God means believe in an ideal, your highest ideal. So God can be embodiment of the classical ideal, ideals of truth, goodness, and beauty. If you devote your life to seek to use a talent to create something good, beautiful, that will help create some objective value, you're able to create some objective value, then your life, people remember you as a creative and kind person. So you don't believe in God, you, you have to act a year as a God. Act as if there is a transcendental values. So you need to have some, some concept of a moral compass to guide you. In this world, all the con artists everywhere. My computer gets all kinds of scams, okay? That many people work get romance, they, 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 they fall into the scam of the, this romance scam. Then people get rich before a scam. So there's so much needs, so many needs in human being. If you don't have the wisdom of fear, fearing God, of fearing a higher power, will be fall into trap. Go, get, get, get quick, get rich quick. Oh, oh romance, ah, beautiful romance. You believe anything people lie, with all the lies. So is it is it the best for you to? have some concept of higher authority to which you are responsible, you are accountable for. Okay, next question. Great, I think, I think that's, um, that's a great ideal is, is a, seeing God as an embodied higher ideal. Um, and you mentioned Marcus Aurelius, and that's actually these four candles behind me represent in my life, uh, the four pillars of Stoicism, justice, temperance, wisdom, Good and courage. You. So, so that, that's a lifetime, just those four things is a lifetime's <laughs> worth of practice. So I, I love that. We have another question here. Um, dear Dr. Wong, sincere gratitude for sharing your wisdom and supporting our well-being with your work. How can I cultivate purpose while facing the cynics? How to cultivate purpose? It's just very, very simple. Very simple. <laughs> your purpose, it depends on knowing yourself. Okay. For example, an orange tree, the purpose of the orange tree is to grow the the best orange, right? <laughs> That's purple orange tree. And, uh, and the, 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 uh, the, the fish purple is to swim in the water, not flying. If you fish can fly, the fish can't fly, right? So you have to understand that we are all purpose-driven animals. Even animals have certain purpose. The purpose of finding food, whatever. So, but we have higher purpose of imagine a better future. See, imagination. See, the, 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 the right brain, the right brain of creativity, imagination, and faith also imagine a better future. So, we have what the use of the right brain, not just reason. Human beings are not completely rational beings. You know, we do many things that you actually can see the scientific research. We have all kinds of biases, attribution bias, judgment bias, and reasoning, uh, logical bias. We have all kinds of biases. So, you know, the purpose, we need to say, well, the first thing is that believe again. Yeah. Believe, meaning, and purpose. There's a purpose and meaning in life. It can be found. Now, this is a very important principle. 
we always find what we believe. We always see what we value. So all belief, all value determine what we see, what we find. William James says that if you believe that life has meaning, you're more likely to find meaning. See, William James, the father of psychology, you believe there's a meaning, you're more likely to find. The same principle, right? So you have to stop and believe. Secondly, you have to believe that every person was born for something like a tree, orange tree for orange. Everybody has a unique purpose, could be unique for, for every, every person. Okay? Everybody is born for a purpose. I cannot, I cannot be fully happy if I try to do something else. I try to be a writer, I try to be a violinist, I try to be a doctor, but these are not my talents, what my talents like. But why choose psychology? That's for me. I'm excited that I find it so easy because I have a gift for psychology. I don't have a gift for violin. I practice a long time. I can still cannot go very far. I learned painting for many years. I still cannot go very far as an artist, as a painter. I try to write novels. <laughs> I try to I write books out of books. <laughs> But still, lousy cannot be. It cannot. It's not a good novel. So you have to. So try. Yeah? You never figure it out in your head. But jumping into the river of life and swim to see, to find the right stroke, to find your talent, your ability. You have to learn by doing. Discover your purpose by trying different things. Can engage in life. Whatever the opportunity, that be how how look, doesn't matter. Any opportunity, any opportunity to do something work that create value for, for other people. Whether waiting on a table or doing dishes. I have been watching I work as cleaning washrooms. I work at a gully, carry carry things. Just 90 pounds. I carry 100 pounds. Back in my back, I try everything. I try everything. See, the, the value of work is not the work itself, but your attitude. You have the right attitude of doing your best to your creativity to serve other people. So no, no job is too low. Those is below you. So by doing, do, so by knowing your, your talent, your interest, your value, the second step is knowing your value. Then the balance between realism and idealism. Realism means that you have to do something to bring food to the table. Okay? You do anything to support yourself. I, I work for many things as a typist. I work as a typist. I, you know, I do everything to feed myself. But I never give up my idea of being a professor, being a psychologist. So I didn't go to university until I was 29. I go to class with, with 17, 18 year old young people. So the, the, the second thing is that don't be afraid to try different things. And also Franco now say, don't waste time to, to look at ultimate meaning forever. Franco liked to talk about meaning in terms of specific meaning in each situation. Now, this is the logic. In every situation, you say, well, what is the right thing for me to do? If you do the right thing in each situation, that will lead to, naturally lead to meaningful life. Because in every situation, you say, what for me, with my talent, with my ability, what is the right thing for me to do in that situation? You will ask yourself this question. You, you, you not live a wasted life. You, 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 your life will be useful and meaningful to every situation you life meaningful. So together, 
you have a meaningful life. So it doesn't matter. If you, you do not have find your calling, have, have you found your mission? It doesn't matter. Don't say, sit down and wait. Just, just do whatever you can, you can do in your position. Just keep yourself active and engaged in society, in life. But doing the right thing in every situation, with the right Beautiful. attitude, or create some sense to help other people. Any Thank you so there? much. Oh, my time now, out. We're oh. out of time for questions, um, but I do encourage you to reach out at the links that Dr. Wong put in the final slide of his presentation. Okay, you can ask me questions and through, through the website. Okay? Perfect. Good, good. Thank you. Yeah, so bye -bye. I really encourage Thank everyone to do that. Everyone's saying thank you so much, Dr. Wong, and saying kind words. And um, one last question for you is, what is your top tip for embodiment? Your top tip to stay embodied for us. I mentioned earlier, keep busy, keep fire burning in your belly, with the fire in your belly, and striving towards a goal. Lovely. Thank you so Every much. Day. Every day, every, every day, day. Not one day, if you like, every day. Every day. There is so much wisdom in your presentation, and um, there, I felt like I hung on to every, every word. So thank you so much for staying up late with us tonight, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we hope to see you on the next presentation on the Leadership Channel. Enjoy the rest of the Embodiment Bye. Conference. Bye-bye.